Hello, my H <clears throat> deaf friends. Let me sync these two cameras. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Semi being Angie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks have a very, very full show today. I want to give a shout out to Miss Milky the Clown who did this show a great justice. Uh, she used one of my videos on her highly, highly trafficked uh, site and uh, we have a lot of new subscribers so you guys will be happy to know there is some different uh, Fukushima news today, not what you would expect. Um, also, all of you that love all the, the weird stuff I have behind me, the memorabilia and stuff, HDEF isn't going to see it, but the uh, low deaf friends will. Would you believe I found Faye Ray's autograph for twenty dollars? Yes, it's true. You want to know what's even cooler than that is that I uh, I went ahead and I got five dollars back for this promotion that was going on at the first Friday event that I went to. So new cool stuff behind me. And for those of you that don't give a rat's ass about Faye Ray, you should. I'm a King Diamond fan, even though I'm Christian. I, I, I'm not one of these supposedly dogmatic Christians that are hiding everywhere. But I do, I notice that you go to a comedy club. My, I was off on a Monday uh, about a year or so ago. And uh, I went to a club that had comedy in it. Without fail, every Christ slam in the whole world not in favor of banning it. I'm libertarian. It's fine. But how is it okay to do it to Christianity? What if you told a few Mohammed jokes? Yeah, you'd be, you'd be you'd probably killed. Um, but it's okay to do anything to Christians, right? It's okay to limit what you can, uh, what you can hang, what you can display, anything at all, if you're Christian. It's, uh, that, all of that's always okay. Did you ever notice that? Well, on Christmas, I got a, a GoPro cam, and I was testing it, and I said that there had been 0.02% of Christians led into the country from the refugee crisis, even though there were hundreds of thousands of Christians over there in uh, one, of the birth pla one of the birthplaces of Christianity, um, the, the original Christians are from this area. Did you let them in? Has anybody heard anything at all about them being let in? Nope, absolutely not. But we're here to help the oppressed, right? Christians are being slaughtered in droves, but they're not being in there. They're not in them in. Patrick, good enough. Uh, 573 Muslims, two Christians. Syrian refugees admitted to the U.S. since the Paris terror attacks. I call them Parists. Uh, CNS News. The number of Syrian refugees being resettled in the United States continues to climb slowly, but of the 576 admitted since last November's Paris terrorist attack, only .03 are Christian. Oh, so we've gone up. We were all, we've gone way up now, haven't we? The two... Christians are an Orthodox man and a Greek Orthodox man, according to State Department Refugee Processing Center. Yeah, you know, because uh, Middle Eastern Christians who have just lived in one community for 2,000 years are known to just radically go insane. You always hear about Orthodox Christian Middle Eastern bombers, don't you? At every station. Meanwhile, 560 Sunni Muslims, that would be 97.2%, and three Shiite Muslims. How's that happen? And ten others identified simply of, as a Muslim have been admitted over the same period. One last Syrian male refugee is identified as other religion. Of the Sunnis admitted, 289 due to your own prejudice and bigotry. And uh, I, I don't think it's extant in as many people as the, uh, the media likes to pretend it is, but I'm pretty sure it's a high enough number to be a significant problem. 
End of the American Dream, Michael Snyder. ISIS plot to shoot up a Detroit megachurch revealed as Christianophobia spreads across America. If you are a Christian, you better brace yourself for great persecution, he writes. It has gotten very little attention from the mainstream media, but federal authorities have uncovered an ISIS plot to shoot up a Detroit megachurch. 22-year-old Kahil Abu Rayyan, he must have been an Orthodox Christian from the Middle East, of Dearborn Heights, Michigan, Michigan, told authorities that he actually intended to take a gun into a very large church in Detroit that can seat up to 6,000 people and start killing Christians. He has been charged with supporting the Islamic State and with illegally having a firearm while using a controlled substance. He admitted that if he can't be part of the jihad in the Middle East, that he would do a jihad over here. And as the author says, he has warned many times before, link right there on fact cam, ISIS terrorists already are here, and what we have seen so far is just the beginning. This is what he wrote. I tried to shoot up the church one day. I don't know the name of it, but it's close to my job. It's one of the biggest ones in Detroit. Yeah, I planned it out. I bought a bunch of bullets. I practiced a lot with it. I practiced reloading and unloading. But my dad searched my car one day, and he found everything. He found the gun and the bullets and the mask that I was going to wear. Well, chances are that his father is also Islamic. So, I mean, I'm not saying all Islamists are pieces of crap. It looks like his dad was very much sane, regardless of what religion he was or wasn't. Point is, you don't read about this story, do you? Why? Because it was after Christians, right? It doesn't matter what happens to the Christians. Investigators didn't name, it says, the church that Abu Rayyan allegedly eyed, but claim the property covers about two blocks less than half a mile from his work and can accommodate up to 6,000 members. He allegedly purchased the gun and told an undercover FBI employee that attacking the church would be easy. A lot of people go there, plus people are not allowed to carry guns in church, the affidavit quotes him as saying. So this guy, for all of you anti-gun nuts, this guy specifically chose a church to shoot up to carry on his jihad. He chose a church. Why? Because churches don't allow firearms. And he knew he'd get away with it, genius. It would make the news. Everybody, everybody would have heard. Honestly, I regret not doing it. If I can't go to jihad in the Middle East, I would do my jihad over here. They want to, terrorists, obviously, he writes, want to create fear. And they want as much media attention as possible. But it said the uh, mainstream media outlets in the United States and Europe proposedly downplay the hatred of these Islamic radicals and what they have, that hatred burning for ordinary Christians. There's a million, it seems, uh, an unlimited number of Islamists that want this wonderful paradise showered with the attention by virgins when they die. Anything for the sex-fueled fantasy, he writes. But uh, Christians, because they don't want to make Muslim immigrants look bad, it's okay. That is why the mainstream media almost entirely ignored the fact that the main target of the San Bernardino shootings was a messianic Christian. Another link. And that is why the mainstream media is burying this current story about Kahil Abu Rayyan. If a Christian baker refuses to bake a cake for a gay wedding, that is front page news. But if a Muslim admits to planning to shoot up a church of several thousand people... It's a non-event, according to the media. Well, not on this show, so hit subscribe. If um, This anti-Christian that goes on bias is growing stronger with each passing year, and it has now become institutionalized in our society in many ways. A recent article from Salem Duke says, uh, quote, A student is punished for refusing to stomp on Jesus. A Christian baker faces, and his links for all of this, you can see it here, a Christian baker faces a year in jail for refusing to cater faux marriages. Two men are arrested for reading the Bible around, aloud near a government building, and a school purges Christians, uh, Christian works, excuse me, from its library. Critics asserting the existence of an institutional anti-Christian bias and a reluctant war on the faith have often been labeled paranoid. But now two University of North Texas sociologists have produced research showing that just such an agenda exists among America's most powerful people. Uh, those sociologists, for those of you that uh, say I never give sources, Professor George Yancey and Professor David Williamson 
and they uh, shared the research in a book called So Many Christians, So Few Lions, Is There Christian Phobia in the United States? Um, and this is uh, from that interview. In the minds of many of the respondents, Christians are ignorant, intolerant, and stupid individuals who are unable to think for themselves. The general image they have of Christians is that they are backward, non-critical thinking, childlike people who do not like science and who want to interfere with the lives of everyone else. But even worse, they see ordinary Christians as having been manipulated by evil Christian leaders and will vote in whatever way those leaders want. They believe that those leaders are trying to set up a theocracy and to force everybody to accept their Christian beliefs. Yeah, anybody that wants, you know, I'm, I'm now converting you. Gotcha, didn't I? Yeah, we work like that. We're magic. So, for some of the Christianophobia, even you that came down to the prayer line up front, thanks, thanks for showing up. This is a struggle for our society and our ability to move forward a progressive society. Christians are often seen as the great evil force that blocks our society from achieving this progressive paradise. And he writes that if you're a liberal, that's quite likely how your view of Christians are. Well, um, Yancey and Williamson, they interviewed a number of cultural progressive activists, and these, you know, the, the fine liberals who love everyone, and here's what they wrote. I want them all to die in a fire that was a male age 26 to 35 with a doctorate. They should be eradicated without hesitation or remorse. There is all, their only purpose is to damage and inflict is to damage and inflict their fundamentalist virus onto everyone they come in contact with. Female age 66 to 75 with a master's degree. Well, the way you talk, it sounds like they want to damage their inflicted virus. So you have a master's degree, but you can't speak. Um, they make me they make me a believer in eugenics. That means the right to kill people and call the population. They pollute good air. I would be in favor of establishing a state for them. If not, then sterilize them so they can breed no more. Now, I'm not in favor of this, but what if someone said, you know, Buddhists make me want to kill people. Muslims pollute the air. I'd be in favor of establishing a state for, uh, um... Hindus, but if not, sterilize them so there can't be any Hindu kids. I don't believe any of that, but would that be okay? No, that'd be front page news everywhere. But what's this? It's nothing. It says, what makes the activists want to erad eradicate Christians that much different? Is it really that much different from an Islamic terrorist that wants to achieve the same goal? Radical terrorists are probably more likely to use violent means to achieve their goal right now, but what would happen if our government became dominated by people who think like the liberal activists quoted above? And don't think that it can't happen here. When radical leftists took power in the Soviet Union, they killed countless numbers of Christians. Do you realize Stalin killed more Christians than Hitler did Jews? That is fact. When radical leftists took over power in China, they killed countless numbers of Christians. And when radical leftists took power in Nazi Germany, they intended to completely eradicate biblical Christianity. Um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt said uh, to Hitler, the church is a monstrosity to be destroyed by any means. And if you don't believe that, here's what Hitler said about Christianity. And again, remember that Hitler was a socialist. Do not say, I don't care if you like or don't like Donald Trump. I'm a libertarian. I admit that he's a populist. And... I, I like Trump. I'm not saying he's the best thing since sliced bread and we're all going to have an amazing life, but at least we're probably going to get our jobs back, a large chunk of them anyway, so I'll vote for that. Uh, but do not say that Donald Trump is a Nazi. Nazi stands for National Socialist Workers Party. Socialist. They were socialists. Now, am I saying that Bernie Sanders is a Nazi? No, I'm saying that Bernie Sanders is a fascist. You can be a fascist without being a racist. Uh, you can't be a Nazi without being a racist fascist. That's the difference, by the way. But no, Donald Trump, nothing about the way he believes is even close to Hitler. He's not a fascist. He's a populist. The Nazi tract Gut und Vok was distributed in 1941, and it describes the life cycle of a German youth in the future who would... With parties and gifts, the youth will be led painlessly from one faith to another and will grow up without ever having heard the Sermon on the Mount or the Golden Rule to say anything of the Ten Commandments. So what are we seeing today? A lot of this grab bag religion. Well, I believe that there's many roads to, to, to God. They all lead the same direction. Well, that's impossible. 
Or it's impossible. I'll tell you why it's impossible. Because in Christianity, Christ said that he is the only way. In Islam, you cannot get into heaven if you believe that. So they both can't be right. Hindus believe there are many gods. Christians believe there are one. They both can't be right. It's impossible. Now, which one you believe in is up to you. But this grab bag religion, the watering down of all religions so that you can worship the state, is happening here, friends. And it's been happening for a long time. The education of the youth, Hitler went on, is to be confined primarily by the teacher, who we know through Common Core is destroying our, our classes today, the officer, and the leaders of the party. One well, of the leaders of the party or the progressive movement that is pushing the death of Christianity. So that would be the left in this country. Unless you're going to try to tell me that the right is destroying religion. The priests will die out. They have estranged the youth from the Volk. Into their places will step the leaders. Oh, the leaders will take over the role of morality in the church. Or we're going to be fine. Because we all know that Bush and Obama were so very moral, they should be our new priests. Priests. Not deputies of God, but anyway, the best Germans. Yeah, the best Germans know nothing of God. And how shall we train our children, thus as though they had never heard of Christianity? What are we seeing today that's that much different than what I just read to you? Feel free to tell me in my comment line. We like to think that we are much better than Nazi Germany, but the truth is that we are the exact same spirit as it work in us today. Americans have been trained to want a society that is completely sanitized of all reference to, references to the Bible and to the Christian faith in the public arena. Our children are being raised in public schools that are specifically modeled after the German system. If you doubt this, look it up. Prayer has been banned, and if you try to read a Bible during school hours, it can get you suspended. There's a link to it. So, friends, I, I mean, I don't know how it could possibly be any plainer than that. There's absolutely no way you could say that there is not a huge war against Christianity. And don't tell me you care about the people from the Middle East. You care about bringing in anybody unvetted that isn't Christian, even though that is what leads to the biggest problem in terms of not knowing who is here. I don't want a refugee to die somewhere because he couldn't get into the country, but I do think they need to be properly vetted. And if that takes some time, then that takes some time. We can't, we can't have this insanity going on the way that we're doing it now. Um, listen to this. Germantown cancels children carnival after terror threat. This is uh, Breitbart. A German town canceled its children's carnival today after authorities received an anonymous letter written in German and Arabic threatening infidels. So they hid the mass rape and uh, molestation and fondling that went on on New Year's until so many people took to social media that they couldn't hide it anymore. Now they've canceled an entire event over it. They're trying to blame it on wind and cover for themselves. No, they had an abysmal failure on New Year's, and they have capitulated once again to the people that they allowed to come into their country absolutely unvetted. The letter, which was written in a style described as disjointed, contained a series of phrases in both languages, including Germany kills all Muslims, and threatened an attack on the children's parade. Germany kills all Muslims when they have let you into the country in droves. Ridiculous. Mind-blowingly stupid sentence to start with. Local paper Westwagischer Anziger said authorities cancel. I tried. Said the authorities canceled the carnival in the town of Hern in western Germany after consulting local police over the note. Around 250 people were expected to attend the event on Sunday as towns all over Germany celebrate the climax of the carnival season. It's a big deal if you're in Germany. So we've got. These ridiculous people letting, and this would be Angela Merkel is the ridiculous person I'm speaking of mostly, would allow people into the country unvetted in streams, and then what they get in return is violence so bad that they can't even have carnival now. Friends, this is brought to you by Change Transportation. If you're within about a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, look up Change Transportation. Tell the dispatcher you heard about it on the correct views, and you'll get a great discount. 
German plan to impose limit on cash transaction met with fierce resistance. So what are they getting for their influx of Muslim charity? They are being told by Muslims that they are trying to murder them when they just gave them their country. And now... And they're going to be told how much cash they're allowed to have and how much cash they're allowed to use to fight terrorists. Mightn't it be a better idea to fight terrorism by not letting the terrorists in the country than it is to fight terrorism by taking the cash away from your citizenry? Let me let you in on a little secret, friends. Long-time listeners will not be shocked by this. They want in your bank account to know what you bought, who you bought it from. They want to check for any... Do you smoke pot? Um... They want to use it for blackmail, what you buy. Um, tell, tell me there aren't a handful of politicians that look at porn that they, you can guarantee they could be slandered in the media if they don't vote this way or that way. Um, they want to know everything about you, and they want to institutionalize the banking system stronger so that everything you do has a fee to it, and everything you do has to go through the banking cartel. That's what they want. Nothing to do with safety. Nothing to do with drugs. A plan to introduce a limit on cash transactions in Germany has been met with fierce resistance across the country, as it should be. Proposals to ban cash payments for more than 5,000 euros to combat money laundering and financing of terrorism has revealed by the German Finance Ministry last week. They face opposition from a broad alliance of political parties, um, including the uh, Hands Off My Cash uh, letter that was written by the Bild. Um, the head of Germany's central bank, Jens Wildmann, has distanced himself from the government's proposal, telling Bill that it would be fatal if citizens got the impression that cash is being gradually taken away from them. That is exactly what is happening, by the way. And if they allow this to continue, I mean, at this point, Germany has allowed such mind rot to become the staple of the country, that it's hard to say just how bad... I mean, I don't know if the average German is as stupid as the average American, but... <laughs> probably. I mean, to, to allow what we've seen here, it's, it's unheard of. All right, friends, moving on. Uh, those of you that joined me for the massive Fukushima update, Miss Milky the Clown, I love you for what you did. Um, a lot of you are new, and I've promised I would be peppering radiation and Fukushima stories into this. Um, this is this was unusual, and uh, the reason I was one of the reasons I was uh, alerted to this was there's an unearthly creepiness that exists for some people in places where great disaster has happened. And I thought this was really interesting in terms of um, a human interest story, okay? Sometimes you got to do something that doesn't involve giving you stories about beheadings and rapes and Hillary Clinton. How about that? Uh, Japanese taxi drivers claim to pick up ghosts of 2011 tsunami victims. And what's interesting here is the, the reason that I, I'm covering this is that you can usually tell when someone's telling the truth if... So many people that do not know each other all have the exact same story. People that have not talked have the same story, same description. Uh, they catch criminals this way a lot. If somebody uh, uh, rapes someone and they say, take that hoe, take that hoe. And then six months down the line, somebody else says, yeah, he said, take that hoe, take that. Then you can kind of, once you get a, a number of people with the same story, you kind of can figure out the likelihood of truth. This is happening among cab drivers, I believe, that never met each other and don't know anything about each other, do not work for the same company, and have the exact same story. So listen to this. Following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami that killed over 15,000 people in Japan and destroyed the Fukushima nuclear power plant, several taxi drivers have reportedly experienced a similar supernatural phenomenon. According to the Ashahi Simbun newspaper, which cited a graduation the thesis by a local sociology student, at least seven taxi drivers in the Ishinomanaki prefecture have admitted to ghostly encounters with the victims of the tsunami. Link, fact cam, you can see it right there. All of the stories play out in a similar way. The taxi driver picks up a passenger in an area that was hit by the tsunami. After asking for a destination, the passenger gives a response that doesn't make any sense, and a short time later the passenger disappears now, I'm sorry, you're not going to get seven different cab drivers that 
never met each other, saying that they picked a passenger up, asked for an odd destination, and vanished. Those three things are not going to be in everyone's story without a bunch of things added or taken away. One taxi driver told the story of a woman who asked for a ride to the Mina, Miami Hama district, to which he asked her if she was sure because the area was practically deserted. The woman then tearfully asked, have I died? When the driver turned around, she was gone. Is that creepy or what? The student who compiled these stories, Yuka Kudo, interviewed again, putting his own name on it, putting himself out there. He's sociology, he's not into ghost hunting, so he's got quite a reputation to lose if he lied. I don't see what his motive would be for lying uh, when he's using his real name for a graduation the thesis. Yuko Kudo interviewed a hundred drivers for her the the thesis. I'm sorry, I don't know my Japanese very well, does a lady. She found a common thread in all of these stories in that all of the apparitions were young people. Whether they really, that's another thing that all lined up. There's a hundred of them this time. Whether she really saw any apparitions is of course up for debate. However, she thinks that all of the cabbies at least believed that they were picking up real passengers because in each story they started their meters before the ghosts disappeared. And as a cab driver I can tell you that uh, you can check when a meter has been turned on and off. And that, uh, that you, again, you could turn it off and on without having a ghost, but again, there's no motive here. So I thought it was interesting. I'm going to get on to uh, some social justice news that's going to make you cringe. Before I do, I want to give a shout out to Sticker Junkie, proud sponsor of the show, and I'm proud to have them on this show. Sticker Junkie. Want to get good stickers made? Go to Sticker Junkie. When you check out put in correct views or the correct views and you are going to save a fortune. That's what you're going to do. So make sure you go to Sticker Junkie. And friends, now we're going to move on to some, some of the dumbest stories I've ever heard. We're going to talk a little bit about the Super Bowl and if you hate sports,